So how can we use the subsystems to develop techniques to quickly annotate either genomes or metagenomes? You'll recall that our subsystem is basically a spreadsheet where we have the column, which is the proteins, and the rows are the genomes where those proteins occur, and the individual cells are the, the proteins within the genome that are performing those roles. So one of the ways that we can use this to annotate genomes and metagenomes is to consider the example where we have a single column, like this, and we extract all of the protein sequences that are present in that column. So we're going to have a FASTA file with several different protein sequences. They're protein sequences, remember, not DNA sequences, and for this work we do it all in protein space. Now what we're going to do is we're going to extract from these protein sequences, we're going to extract all possible KMAs. And our K here is typically from 7 to 12 amino acids. Now remember, with amino acids we've got 20 possibilities. So uh, that ends up being quite a, a big collection of KMAs. Once we've extracted these, we filter them to identify only, only the KMAs that are present in our family that we're interested in, and KMAs that we never find anywhere else. Now, in our database, we may have 100,000 genomes, and so we can easily say, tell me all the KMAs that are unique, for example, to beta-galactosidase, that we never find anywhere else. So we're going to filter these for unique KMAs. So those are the ones that only represent beta-galactosidase. And once we've done that, we can build a data structure that allows really efficient searching of these amino acid strings. And for that, we're going to use a suffix tree. So let me give you an example. From beta-galactosidase, we may find the KMA that has the sequence HPLH G Q V. And we may find another KMA that has the sequence H P L H L N V. To build our suffix tree, when we do that, we start with the first character. We start with the H, and we say, okay, we can add an H P L H. And depending on which of these we're adding, we can either add the G Q V or the LNV. We recycle the first four characters in each case um, as part of the suffix tree. Now if I'm coming along with an unknown sequence, and maybe my unknown sequence is HPLHRQV, all I have to do is I have to look through and say, okay, I've got an H, and then I've got a P, and I've got an L, and I've got an H but I don't have an R. So this is not a match to my uh, suffix tree. This does not belong in beta-galactosidase. In contrast, if I come along with one of my known query sequences, I can very quickly scan along and say, yes, I have a match. Now the advantage of that is the complexity of doing this search is dependent on only the length of our KMA and not the overall number of proteins in our database. So we've really reduced a lot the complexity of our search. The difficulty is that, in fact, when we've got 20 amino acids and we've got strings between 7 and 12 amino acids long, that becomes a lot of possibilities to search through, and that search space becomes really quite large quite quickly. And so on the seed, we've also put some alternative back-end approaches, some ways to filter that out. We, for example, um, build an index based off of the first amino acid so that we've split our data essentially into 20. And then we can go and build separate fixed trees within there. And so how can we use this to annotate a genome or a metagenome sequence? Basically, what we do is we take the uh, sequence that we're looking at, the translated DNA sequence, for example, and we identify regions that match along our translated sequence. 
the number of regions that match give us more and more confidence that actually what we're looking at is beta galactosidase. If we only have one 7 ma that matches beta galactosidase, no, it's probably not really beta galactosidase that we're looking at. If we have 4 or 6 or 20 7 mers that actually match beta galactosidase, the more and more we have, the more confident we are. We also constrain this a little bit so that they have to be within a certain distance because you don't want to have one sequence that matches at the beginning and one that matches the end and then call that a match. Now, the advantage of using KMERS over using something like a BLAST-based search is that we've got this very efficient data structure for searching and we're only looking for exact matches. And so what that means is if there's a mutation that's changed one amino acid, then we don't worry about it because we'll find KMERS on either side. If we have a few more mutations, then the more and more mutations that we accrue, the less likely we are to find KMERS. And so the more KMERS that we find that match, the more confident we are that that's exactly what we're looking for. Also, by building our spreadsheet, starting with E. coli and Klebsiella, but then moving out across all of phylogenetic space, we can very quickly build KMERS that match across different organisms. And so then we get robust, uh, confident assertions of function.